properties. There is a cost savings that could be realized by the producer for tighter height tolerances. I like to call this the power of small numbers. And I'd like to go through an exercise, an example of showing how this might apply to you, the producer. If we, if we consider making Hol uh, Holland pavers, just a regular Holland paver, and say we make these on a CPM 60 or a six at a time machine with a deep pallet. Uh, that deep pallet uh, being uh, 700 millimeter by 1400 millimeter or 27 and 9 sixteenths by 55. On that size pallet, we can produce 36 pavers per machine cycle. Okay, say the, say the plant runs a single shift 10 hours a day and say we produce pavers five days a week and 50 weeks in the year. And say we run that plant at a modest cycle rate of six cycles per minute and 90% efficiency. At that rate, you would produce 29,160,000 pavers in a year. Now, making pavers if you're thinking of producing a 60 millimeter tall paver, which is an imperial size two and three eighths inch, ASTM C936 allows plus or minus an eighth inch in height tolerance. But if you could hold half of that, if you could hold plus or minus a sixteenth of an inch, you could effectively save an eighth of an inch of material per paver because you could work on the lower tolerance range uh, of that specification. So now you're producing pavers between two and a quarter and two and three eighths in height and not on the upper end of that tolerance range. So saving just an eighth of an inch on a paver, on, the, on a regular hollow stone paver, saves 0 .0023 cubic feet per paver. Now that seems like a ridiculously small amount. But what we're going to find is that that number is significant in a year's time because of the power of small numbers. So if we take that amount of material per paver and we extrapolate that over the number of pavers produced in a year, now we're talking about 67,000 cubic feet of concrete saved per year. And using a, an assumed density of 145 pounds per cubic feet, I know this varies, but if we just assume that, that turns into over 4,800 tons of concrete. And if we assume $25 per ton of concrete, and this is arrived at just using some average numbers, uh, $90 a ton for cement and uh, average costs of sand and aggregate materials. This comes to a savings per year of over $121,000. And that's a lot of money. Now not everybody is going to run pavers all year. So if we did the same exercise for segmental retaining wall products, and if we looked at a just a four inch garden wall with a surface area of seven and a half by 11 inches, just a common size, applied all the same factors to it, an eighth of an inch savings of, of material per cycle. We make 16 units of these per cycle on this same machine size. Uh, seven cycles a minute would be more, more likely on these than the six, but we still use 90% efficiency and the density wouldn't be as high, so 130 pounds per cubic feet density. But now, what we're looking at with these, if we ran them all year long, is almost 6,000 tons of concrete. This savings is even more, almost $147,000. Now, in both of these cases, we're dealing with products 
that are solids that cover a lot of surface area of the palate. If we look at block, and on this palate size, you would make six blocks per cycle. But if we looked at 8816 blocks with 50% void content, and we go through the same exercise, all the same factors, same cycle rate, we're trying to be modest here, the density would be even lower, I believe it was 120 pounds per cubic foot. Of course, the savings is a lot less, $35,000, $36,000 a year, but still significant. Now, most plants today are more versatile plants. They don't make all block products, they don't make all paver prod products, and they don't make all SRWs. But a lot of plants make a combination of those. And so if we, if we assumed that you would make, say, a third production out of each of these, the average of these numbers is still over $100,000 a year.